Hello everybody, welcome back to That Fiction Life. Happy release date to Kingdom of the Wicked by Kerry Maniscalco. I was so incredibly lucky to read this book earlier in the month. And suffice to say, as predicted, I am obsessed. This video will be completely spoiler free. Now before you ask what the hell are you doing making a feast when talking about a book that has princes of hell, let me explain. In this book, the protagonist's family are Italian, that's where the book is set, they also own a restaurant. It makes it feel so authentic because the characters are so invested in all these different flavours. So last week I did my makeup as per usual based on the book cover and made a whole Italian feast. That's going to be popping up throughout the video so I really hope you enjoy it, I had so much fun filming so without further ado let's get started. So this book made me unstable in my emotions. As you all know, fantasy is my favourite genre. However, I don't enjoy very stiff and serious fantasies. I need there to be sassy characters and I like when there's a lot of comedic relief throughout. This book is hilarious and I cannot even explain to you how funny some of the lines were. I do read some of the quotes right at the end of the video. The main premise of this book follows Amelia and her family who are witches. Now rumour has it that the princes of hell have awoken and are walking the earth once again. Now after losing her twin, Amelia becomes very consumed with revenge. So this is a murder mystery at its core. So we will be making a starter, a main and a side. And Hodder have created these recipe cards for when they sent us the book. And one of these is the perfect starter and it's called Amelia's Caprese Inspired Bruschetta. For the main, I'm going to be making penne alla vodka, which is more of an American Italian recipe, but I've completely changed it to my own version. And then for the side, we're going to be making garlic bread. So I pre-made this this morning because this needs to prove for about two hours. Look at it, hello. For the sauce, you're going to need half an onion, two cloves of garlic, 150 grams of tomato puree, a shot of tequila, but this is not an essential ingredient. This is just something I added for extra flavor. Some chili flake, tablespoon of honey, tablespoon of dried basil and oregano, and some cheddar or parmesan. And this is purely personal preference, but you can also add some mushrooms. I forgot about the tequilas. Now the Italian setting made this book so atmospheric. The last book that I read that's set in Italy is the Arcadia Awakened series by Kai Mea. One of my favourite books of all time because like in Kingdom of the Wicked, the places were so visually beautiful and it felt like you're right there in the moment. I would say this book downright reads like a high fantasy, which is so hard to do in a contemporary setting. Now this book is dark as hell. It downright crosses into adult fantasy at times, which is my favourite part because it really crosses lines and some of the scenes were horrifying. The characters were manipulative. Also another favourite. I'm a damaged human. <laughs> Now we need to talk about the notion of Princes of Hell. The way that it's weaved into the story is so clever. So you know the seven deadly sins? Yeah, each of those is a prince in hell that rules over their own house and some of them pop up throughout this book. And let me just show you this map that exists. So I was looking at this before reading the book and I thought, let's analyze which castle is the best. And I thought, oh, look at this one, so beautiful. And I read the tag and it says that these are the gates of hell. And the most interesting part meeting some of these princes is the fact that something that you may have thought would be more dangerous than the other really isn't. They all give you chills, genuinely. You feel a presence. And Carrie's just done an incredible job of making these characters feel so real and all their ulterior motives. <sighs> so my sauce is now ready for its final ingredient, which is the double cream. Add some grated cheddar into the sauce. Parmesan is ideal for this, but I just didn't happen to have any. Thank you. 
Okay, so here is what I've ended up with. I'm going to put this in the oven for a few minutes and then we're going to assemble it with garlic butter, which is the best ingredient on the whole planet Earth. I'm going to wait for it to cool a little bit before I put everything on top. And while that happens, I'm going to start making the bruschetta. And for this, we just need to dice the tomatoes and the mozzarella and then add all the ingredients to a bowl. I'm almost done with my little bruschetta mix. I just need to add some balsamic. So I made some garlic butter earlier. For this, I just mixed some parsley, garlic, and obviously butter. Now, this recipe is actually based on the ZZ's garlic bread because they put caramelized onions on it. Okay, so this is my garlic bread fully assembled. It smells so delicious and I'm now going to put this in the oven for about six or seven minutes. Now, Amelia is the poster girl for being in denial. While what happened to her is so traumatic, she's so consumed with revenge that her actions were so unpredictable and you generally didn't know what was going to set her off next. And I quite enjoy chaotic books. You felt tricked a lot of the time. You didn't really know whether what you were reading was a clue. I felt like the magic could have been better explained. You see these throwaway lines of some family members making candles and potions, and I wish that we had a better understanding of the magical system in place, because at times I felt like I didn't know the extent of their powers. The plot does lack follow through quite a few times. Something heinous will happen and the next chapter it's like, okay, next and then the next and then the next chapter we're chilling. I was very proud of myself because I actually caught on who the killer was. That is, however, not a bad thing. I am a very strong believer in the fact that each reading experience is so subjective and even if you may guess who a killer is, it doesn't take away from the reading experience at all. Now the romance. And it's not even a romance, it's just my mind manifesting it. <laughs> This is quite honestly a downward spiral. I don't like the term enemies to lovers because it's become this thing that I feel like every book is described as such these days, even though the characters didn't really have a hateful relationship to start with. You have someone that, you know, says one rude remark to the heroine, it's like, <gasps> enemies. No. In this book, the hatred was real. And I enjoyed seeing that development. And in a very unpredictable way, it doesn't take us full circle to this lover's aspect that everyone is obviously looking forward to. I think sometimes a slow burn is very good. And in this sense, it's not even a spoiler me telling you that because it's so all over the place. I don't even know where they're at at the moment. If you're looking for a very chilling and atmospheric book with very intriguing characters, I would highly recommend this. And let me tell you, the final scene, it was holy. You know how I feel about female characters that just do not stick to the rules. And not in an annoying way, like Clary Frey, but in a completely badass and unapologetic way, like Jude from The Cruel Prince, you know, my queen. Amelia really reminds me of her at times in the best way because I like morally ambiguous protagonists. They're not always there being the most relatable and pure characters. Because I think when you go through something like Amelia did, genuinely at the start of the book, losing such a huge part of yourself, meaning her sister in this instance, is not something that will leave you the same as you were before. And I think Kerry has done a really great way of showing us that character development, and I cannot wait to see what happens in the sequel. So that is my completed meal. We have the pasta here, garlic bread, and the bruschetta starter. I had the most fun with this video. I can't wait to eat all this food. But before I do, as promised, we are going over some of the quotes because some of these just gave me a heart attack and I genuinely didn't know what to do with myself. Mild spoiler warning in terms of quotes, but you won't really understand what's going on. So the first one that broke my soul is, you know, the two characters have had some angsty moments and something happens and he says, live long enough to hate me for this. This is some cruel prince level 
angst, with hatred, and honestly, R.I.P. Number two, redacted name, had followed me into my nightmare, battled death, and dragged me out. That was a fun one. Another favourite, why do villains always wear black? Better to hide the blood with wit. I mean, hello. Now one of the most hilarious parts is when um, one of the characters thinks that the giving someone an olive branch is called the twig of truth. And these characters was so unique. I really enjoyed getting to know the demons the most. They were all so enigmatic. So those are my thoughts on Kingdom of the Wicked by Kerry Maniscalco. I'm going to leave book links in the description. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you so, so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!